last section, we started to talk about the nephron, which we will continue to discuss. When you're taking a look at the nephron, you're going to see this C-shaped structure. At least it looks like the C-shaped structure on this diagram. That is what's known as the glomerular capsule. It is also known as Bowman's capsule, and I will probably refer to it mostly as Bowman's capsule because that's the term I learned. You will also see this knot of capillaries, which is known as the glomerulus. The glomerular capsule is going to surround that glomerulus. When you have those two components, the glomerular capsule and the glomerulus together, it is known as the renal corpuscle. You will see that there is an afferent arteriole bringing blood into the glomerulus, and then there's going to be an efferent arteriole bringing it out. Oops, there we go. So you will remember that the nephron is the microscopic functional unit of the kidney. The structure itself is going to be co composed of the renal corpuscle and the renal tubule, which will have different sections itself. As I said before, the renal corpuscle is going to be the glomerulus, which is the actual filtration unit that is going to rest or reside within Bowman's capsule. That Bowman's capsule forms the outer wall of the corpuscle. It is lined by simple squamous epithelium. There's going to be a layer of epithelium that will cover the glomerular capillaries, and that is gonna consist of these large cells that have these pedicels, which are feet. They are known as podocytes. Those feet are going to interlock, those pedicels will interlock and form filtra filtration slits, which are basically just small spaces in between those feet. Anything that is small enough will pass through those filtration slits. And whatever passes through those filtration slits has to be tiny. So let's take a look at this. So this structure here, the Bowman's capsule, and the glomerulus form the corpuscle. You remember there's an afferent arteriole and there is an efferent arteriole. This is the proximal convoluted tubule. So let's start to think about how we actually form urine. The very first step in urine formation will be glomerular filtration. The very first step in urine formation will be glomerular filtration. So the afferent arteriole has a larger diameter than the efferent arteriole. When you have a big conduit feeding into a narrower conduit, you're going to have to have a buildup of pressure. And that buildup of pressure will force anything that is small enough out through those filtration slits. And you can see the podocytes here and those interlocking pedicels or feet are there. So anything that is small enough is going to get squeezed out between those interlocking feet and end up in within the Bowman's capsule. From there, it will move into the proximal convoluted tubule. And then if you remember, there's no, going to be the nephron loop or the loop of Henle. And then at the distal end, the distal convoluted tubule. So we just went over quickly and succinctly the first step in your information, which is filtration occurs because of a pressure buildup in the glomerulus, forcing anything that is small enough, whether the body needs it or not, out into 
the filtrate, which is in Bowman's capsule, and then we'll move into the tubule. The glomerular capsules themselves are fenestrated, and they are going to form what's known as a filtration membrane with filtration slips, slits, sorry. This is a great picture of the renal corpuscle, and you can see the glomerulus housed inside of that, and then you can see how the tubule is going to extend off of that. Another picture of the same thing. Remember we talked about the juxtaglomerular apparatus. These cells are going to be part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which is going to be in here. And you'll remember they're associated with the production of Brennan. Whoops, don't know why that didn't work it. What happened there? Here's a renal corpuscle. You know you're going to have an afferent arterial leading into the glomerulus and an efferent arterial pulling blood out. So here is the afferent arterial, here is the efferent arterial, here is the glomerulus with those podocytes, and here is Bowman's capsule leading to the proximal convoluted tubule. More of the same, I love these pictures, I do, I do. Look at this fantastic image. Here's a podocyte, you can see the pedicels interlocking. This is a picture of the exact same thing. I'm going to talk about this in just a minute, so hang on to that. Here it is. Hello. Sheesh. Okay, so the Bowman's capsule is going to have simple squamous epithelium here. Here's the glomerulus, and the filtrate will be pushed into this. You can see each of these is a transverse section of a tubule. The walls of the tubules are going to be made up of simple cuboidal epithelium. So the walls of the tubules, for the most part, will be made up of simple cuboidal epithelium. The walls of the Bowman's capsule will be simple squamous epithelium. And this I love. I put this in just because I think it's beautiful and fantastic and amazing and frameworthy. This shows you what's going on. You have an afferent arterial leading to the glomerulus. You have an efferent arterial draining the glomerulus. Because the efferent arterial has a smaller diameter than the afferent arterial, there will be a buildup of pressure, which will force anything that is small enough to leave the glomerulus. That material will move into the Bowman's capsule and then move into the distal, sorry, the proximal convoluted tubule. As filtrate. More exciting things happen to that filtrate than the rest of the tubule. Again, here are the parts, proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule. The loop of Henle has an ascending limb and a descending limb. The descending limb is going to reabsorb ions. It is relatively impermeable to water. The ascending limb is going to reabsorb water. It is relatively impermeable to ions. The distal convoluted tubule will connect with the collecting duct. The filtrate will spill into the collecting duct and will then move into a minor calyx and then move into a major calyx and those will merge to form the renal pelvis. Multiple nephrons will terminate in a collecting duct. Let me repeat that. Multiple nephrons will terminate in a collecting duct. We have two types of nephrons, the cortical nephron and the juxtamedullary nephron. The cortical nephron, uh, the cortical nephron is one that has the loop of Henle, which is going to dip into the medulla. 
when you talk about the juxtamedullary nephrons, that's about a quarter-ish of the nephrons. The glomerulus is close to the medulla. It is not smack dab in the middle of the cortex like the cortical ones are. The loop of Henle is going to extend quite deeply into the medulla. And the job of these guys is to concentrate urine. I mentioned in the last segment that there will be a network of capillaries that are going to surround the tubules, and they are known as the peritubular capillaries. They are going to be supplied and arise from the afferent, sorry, the efferent arteriole. The glomerulus arises from the afferent arteriole. And they're going to run alongside the nephrons. They will allow for reabsorption and secretion. The other two steps of your information are reabsorp reabsorption and secretion. The vasa recta are peritubular capillaries that are going to surround the loop of Henle. They are relatively straight and their function is the maintenance of a specific concentration gradient of both sodium and water. This shows you the cortical nephrons and the juxtamedullary nephrons, as well as the vasa recta of the juxtamedullary nephrons. You'll notice that the loop of Henle in the juxtamedullary nephrons is longer. Now, blood flow. Holy moly, what do you need to know? Well, let's sit tight and let's go to this diagram. So what are the blood vessels that you absolutely positively need to know? Well, you need to know that the renal arteries are going to arise from the aorta and specifically the abdominal aorta. They will divide into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller arteries until you get to the afferent arteriole. You need to know the afferent arteriole, which gives rise to the glomerulus. Filtration, glomerular filtration will happen at the glomerulus and that will morph into the efferent arteriole. You need to know that which will give rise to either the vasa recta, vasa recta, or the peritubular capillaries. The next blood vessel that you need to know is the renal vein, which will drain into the inferior vena cava. Stay tuned for more exciting facts about the urinary system.